And Kanko shows back up with Snake Eyes in the same deck, and we have some Runic for you as well. Make sure you guys smash the little crap out of that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out more awesome content. You know, when we take a look at these regionals right now, I, I've been trying to find what is classified as the sauciest events for you right now. And uh, this one this one does meet some of those uh, interesting criteria. Yes, we had three Snake Eyes Fire Kings. Yes, I know that these cards have been dominating the format. Insert long-winded, wow, Fire King is such a good deck here. We also had two Voiceless Voice. Actually, this is a little bit higher of a representation than I'm kind of used to seeing for Voiceless Voice at this point in time. I do think that it, it's pretty good to see that, you know, the deck is fundamentally still doing its thing. Yes, and it did win the regional, by the way. So, good. What about, uh, what about Pure Snake Eyes? What's going on with that? Yes, we did have one Pure Snake Eyes get second place. Unfortunately, it missed the mark a little bit because Voiceless Voice just appears to be a much stronger deck than what we're kind of used to seeing. Now, we did have a Runic Stun player coming out of the woodwork here, and this was the thing that caught my attention. One, because it's Runic, and I absolutely love the madness that that deck causes, but it's it's kind of cool. See, you know, even with the current, you know, adjustments and how the meta has kind of pushed for, you know, the shift here, it's good to see what is actually challenging the meta here and still doing its thing. Now, the last deck in this top cut is what I'm going to classify as an absolute train wreck of a deck. It is Minkanko with a Snake Eyes package in it. Does that just prove that, you know, anything can be played with the idea behind it, you know, with Snake Eyes just being that crazy of a package? I believe probably so, actually. Like, this deck aims to challenge a lot of the norms that we've kind of been used to seeing out here. And it's interesting to kind of consider that. Hmm, what an interesting top cut. Let's pass on over to deck list. All right, so our first deck list here is actually playing Odd Eyes Pendulum Graph Dragon. This is, okay, so I'm so used to, like, seeing, oh, just kidding. We're still playing the Double Saravis. Honestly, at this point in time, I think the Double Saravis has been the absolute go-to for a lot of these builds. And honestly, Double Saravis is just the GOAT when it comes to this sort of thing. You know, like, this card is the thing that, you know, not being a once per turn, the hand protection effect, it is everything that you want to see. And then this is just a little bit of icing on the cake you know, to kind of give you a little bit of extra push for some of your combo. Hmm. I see our hand trap lineup, the basic 12 that I think we're used to seeing at this point. We also have double talents in here. Okay, and we're also only playing two copies of Pot of Prosperity, so you do have some of your standard filtering options that you're pretty used to having for a deck like this. You should be able to navigate which hand traps you need. And, uh, hi, Delta. How are you? Good stuff. Next up here. Ah, uh, yes, the pure Snake Eyes package with the Magician Souls in here to filter through any potential dead cards that you might see some extras of. No, this is interesting. This build is actually playing a Where Are Thou, and to be honest with you, you know, if you have a Snake Eyes Ash on the field, you get the ability to toggle on into the Magician Soul, which is a free dump slash, you know, extension. I think that's that's one of the things that, like, this deck has really kind of needed to find a way for is, you know, if you get stumped on some of your weird boards here, you need to find ways to be able to capitalize on them and be able to find the extension path for you to do your thing, and that's where this actually comes in. See, we're also playing one copy of Curry Car in here as well. Uh, post side decking, you have the Bice Deals, you actually have the Fenners, and you have the one copy of the Subversion in here as well. So you've got pretty much all of your, all your bells and whistles, I think, in one deck. Cool. Ah, it's our runic stun deck. Two Amanos. Yes, finally, somebody gets it. I like this build is like literally everything that I wanted because two Morganite, because three just feels awful some games. It's a two of you want to see it some of the time, but not all of the time. All right, you have, yeah, we are actually playing the Golden Dropple, which is good. You do have the One Demise. You are playing One Desires, but you are also playing the Triple Duality in here for filtering options. So that's actually pretty good. And then, of course, we are playing one of each of the Flood Gatorous built into the main deck. Interestingly enough, um, this deck is not playing any real madness cards like the Dimensional Fissure. 
I swear dimensional fissure is something that you feel like you need in a lot of these matchups, but okay. Uh, you do see that instead, you know, we have the double sphere mode, or excuse me, the double border, the triple sphere mode, and we're actually playing a thrust down here as well. That's kind of cool. Hello, good card. How are you? And we're actually siding judgments. Okay. I like this list quite a lot, actually. This is the good stuff. All right. We have uh, Snake Eyes, Fire King. Oh, man. These, these little splash builds. They are so small. I uh, I see that it looks like we're going to have a lot of Fenrir's here. I guess the current trend looking at this week's events is you're just going to board Fenrir. Like, and realistically, I think that's fine. You know, having Fenrir be a card that you can side into to help you with a lot of your matchups is pretty good. You're still doing the one of split here. You do see the Divine Temple has moved into the pure builds, um, I or into the, the hybrid builds. I'm glad to see that. Because in the very early days, they weren't even touching this, or it was a side deck card. And it definitely helps out a lot. We're also playing 41, which is fine. Double Kieran for the defensive options. And then, of course, you know, once again, post side decking. I mean, you do have a splash of bice deals here. Not like the, the full package that you're going to want. But, okay, we also have the ghost bells down here. And, of course, anti-scam fragrance. Because I don't want to lose to the randomness that are the spell cards. We have learned that there are too many random things in this game. Good stuff. Next up here. We have more voiceless voice. Uh, now this is what we like to see. The two of Splitteroo here, no pendulum graph. We are doing the Fallen of Albaz package in here, which is good. I do think that the Fallen of Albaz stuff has helped this deck out a lot. Now, once again, not every build is going to run out here and go, oh my gosh, you know, you need to play this. No, you still have your, you know, chances for what you want to play here. Um, this build is also playing Jaugen in the side deck and the pendulum grab. So if you do need to board in to, you know, do the sanctifier play off of the Jaugen, you are able to do so super easily here. Like, this is actually pretty good that, you know, Obviously, you, you could go, well, you know, maybe I want to main it. And that's fine, but you're just, you're making sure you have more room and you're trying to be as consistent as possible. You know, you got to love, you know, some of the issues and things that you can run into with these sorts of cards. Cool. All right, what else we got back here? More Fire King. Oh, man, that just seems to be the, the real pushing of the video these days. We do have two Ghost Mourner and Moonlit Chills here. This is, uh, I feel like, pretty normal here. Once again, hey, how are you, Divine Temple? Still maximizing on triple of this. Yep, uh, maxim. We actually play in Droll. That's kind of cool. Uh, and then, of course, we have Yield Cross out of here. If you've noticed, most of these builds, um, at least for this event, not really given too much of a crap for the uh, the whole cross out designator here. Um, I guess like people are just like, well, you know, if we run into the fire mirror match, you know, we just kind of go like this, which once again is understandable. I mean, we've had it where you just run into so many issues out here at this sort of uh, point. So, but still, I, I personally think this card is really, really strong for what you need it to do. But okay, outside of that, looks pretty straightforward for what I would be running into for, you know, your standardized meta. And, of course, our Minkanko Snake Eyes deck with our little mini warrior package in here. So how in the world does this work? Well, you see this little card right here? This lets you go down some of your equip lines. I, I, I do... Power Tool Braver Dragon, being able to interact with the equip stuff is actually pretty good because you have so many of them to give you everything you need. This build is also playing enemy controllers and droplets here, which is actually pretty good. Um, taking control of your opponent's cards and being able to massively negate as need be, sending some free equips, also going to be good. Uh, we are playing the one that gave Dragon. We're not going to go too much into this. You know your shenanigans that we're pulling off of this. And I do see that we do have a Destructive Daruma Cannon down here as well. Note, uh, there's a, there's a triple thrust for it and our D-Berry. Yeah, that's pretty normal. And of course, ye old Kurikara. Yeah, this is what I kind of expected. Like, you're playing this deck because you have access to this, these good cards. Interesting. And then we have more Fire Kings. Wow, just talk about how consistent can this deck be? 43 cards, Duelist. Oh, man. We are playing one Century, one Island. Wow, such combo much. Wow, you do have the one Divine Temple here. You also have some Bice Deals in your side deck to help you out against your light and dark matchups. And we also have triple anti-spell fragrance because we do not want to lose to any of those pesky floodgate cards like Soul Release taking away our graveyard. Not like a lot of people are playing that anyway. So that is our... Sorry, sorry, I had to. That is your breakdown for this regional 
Wowee. I'm happy to just see the change though. Please, if comment down about Tomo Jai's thing, I'll see your beautiful faces back in the day, guys. Peace. Patrons, thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.